Hello everybody and welcome back and in this tutorial I just want to show you how you can make your Kali Linux machine a full screen. Now I am record I already recorded this video but for some reason the video didn't have audio on it. So you might be asking why are you not just redoing the video and showing us everything from the beginning? Well basically uh, something really interesting happened and by interesting I mean there was an error that occurred and I was still able to get the full screen mode in Kali Linux, but I just want to show you how you can get it and uh, if you encounter the same error, what you need to do in order to actually get your Kali Linux into the full screen mode. Now that's why I will be running just the the actual uh, video of the screen recording that I saved while I was trying to make my Kali Linux full screen. Uh, I will narr narrate over it, don't worry, let me just find which one was it. I believe it was the 23 minutes or something like that, so it was a rather long video. So here it is. And let me just put this into the full screen mode. So as you can see right now, I already, uh, or not already, I still have the regular Kali Linux small box machine. Uh, it's still not full screen and let me just show you what I did in order to get it to the full screen. So I opened up my terminal as you can see right here. So just click on the icon uh, on the left right here in order to do that, which you should know by now. Open your terminal and here I'm typing the command prompt in order to open my command prompt on Windows so I can show you what the terminal actually is in Linux. So basically both of these are actually the same. The command prompt which you might have actually encountered sometime on your Windows machine is basically just a program that allows you to execute system commands. Well basically the terminal in Linux is the actual same thing. Just this is in Windows and this is in Linux system. So let us continue. Let's see what else I showed right here, which I can't really remember. I will just go over every step I did in order to get the Kali Linux machine to be full screen. So let me just see. I opened up my Firefox and yeah, the reason why I opened Firefox is because we have to find the uh, repository on the Kali Linux website, uh, which allows us to specify the link in our sources.list file. Now for those of you who are new, you probably have no idea what I'm talking about, but don't worry, this process, I will show the entire process of actually doing it. So what, what I did is basically I just opened the Firefox, then I closed these basically windows, these two windows that pop up by default, and I just want to actually go to the official Kali Linux uh, website. So as you can see, I'm typing right here Kali repositories, so I just type reposi and forgot even to finish the sentence, but it doesn't even matter. What you need to type in Google search bar is Kali repositories on your Kali Linux machine. Once you do that, you will go basically to the first link, which is Kali docs minus Kali Linux, which is on the official site of Kali Linux. As you can see, this is the link. And all you want to actually find is the resources that we want to, or puzzle me, the repositories that we want to actually specify in our uh, apt sources.list file. And those repositories, as you can see, I'm trying to find them. Here they are. You need to actually get the Kali rolling repository as I am specifying right here. So you just go down, scroll down and copy this part right here. Copy the entire link. As we can see, currently I am copying it. So we can specify it in our sources.list file. Then let me just go right here. So I opened after that my terminal and right now what I will do is I will navigate to the sources.list file. Currently I am in the root directory and I will navigate with the command called cd. As we can see this ls command, once you type it in your terminal on Kali Linux, it will just link, uh, list the uh, directories in the current directory. So these are all the folders in my root directory. And with this CT, or pardon me, CD at CAPT, I'm changing my directory to the at CAPT directory. And right now, if I specify ls right once again, you can see in that directory, here is our sources.list file that we need. Now let me just go a little bit back. So what I did right here is I used the command nano sources.list and what nano command does basically is it opens something similar to the notepad 
so you can edit the file in there. It is a program that comes pre-installed in Kali Linux and you can use it to nano any program, any file, any text file in order to see its contents and in order to change its contents. So we want to nano the sources.list file which we found in the slash etc slash apt directory which we navigated with this command cd etc apt. Once we open that file you will see that this is specified in that file. Now we already have the the thing that we copied, as we can see if I paste the thing that I copied from the Kali Linux official website, you can see that these two links are the same. Now if, if in your case they are not the same, what you want to do is you want to actually uh, delete one, or not delete one, you want to paste the one that we copied uh, in case that the, that the, the one that I opened right here is not present. But since you can see in my case I already have two the same links, so I will not need this one, so as you can see right now, I will delete it from here. All these other links that are under the hashtag are the links that won't be used, and don't remove the hashtags from them since we don't really need them currently. So all you have to do right now in order to save this, so as you can see I'm just showing you what hashtag does, you need to leave it like this, so with one link, you want to control O to save, let me just see when do I do that, so it should be control O to save, then enter, then control X to exit the program. So let's go a little bit forward, as we can see I press control O, it asks me file name to write, sources.list, you press there enter, and then you control X to exit. So let me just go forward, and as we can see, uh, right after you do that, this is the command that you want to run, apt minus get and then update. So once you run that, it will take a few seconds to finish, so let me just move that. As we can see it finished, I use the clear command to clear my screen, which is an optional, you don't really need to use it. And the next thing I do is apt install linux minus headers. Now let me just see wh uh, when I write the full command right here, so I will explain everything this command does, even though it doesn't really matter, you just need to run it in order to install the headers. And basically what this command does is it installs the Linux headers currently needed for our Cal Linux version. This command uname-r, if typed in terminal, will basically just print out the, the version of headers needed, or the version of headers that are currently on your Cal Linux machine. But with this command I specify to install uh, the headers that are already made for my Cal Linux version with this command right here. So we let this run, it shouldn't take too long. Oh yes, here is the error that I encountered, which is basically uh, a lock appeared. Uh, anytime you actually get this error during the installation of any program or APT update and upgrade, it will say could not get lock uh, and then the path to the lock. Now there are three locks, and in case you get this error, all you want to do is actually delete all these three locks. Now if you don't get this error, don't worry, you might not even get this error, but in my case I did get, so I had to delete all of those three locks. The first one is specified with this path right here, so you just use the rm command, which stands for remove, and then you just copy this path right here, and paste it after the rm. This will delete the lock at that path, and then you can proceed to download. But as you can see there will be a second lock that will appear on different path and you will need to actually delete that one as well. So as we can see I remove the lock right now and I try once again and right here you see that I actually have another lock on different path so you just copy this path as well and you perform the same rm command in order to remove that lock. As we can see here I am explaining that, so let us remove it. As we can see right now I removed it, and I tried to run the apt install Linux headers once again, and this is where I got the another error for the third lock and last lock which you need to delete before you actually are able to download this. Now the lock is at this file, so you just copy this file, you specify rm once again, and delete the lock at that path. And right now if you run the apt install Linux headers once again, you will be good to go and you will be able to actually download them in case you don't have them. 
Now in my case, let me just go this way forward. In my case, it was already the newest version, so it didn't have to download. Now let me see what I did next. So I will just forward this. Okay, so right here, after that, what I did is basically I went to my, let me just show you because I already passed it. So after you install the Linux headers, where you want to go is you want to go right here to the devices. So let me just let this run. So devices. Then you want to insert guest edition CD image. So click on that. As we can see, I clicked right here. And it will prompt with this window saying contains software intended to be automatically started. Would you like to run it? What you want to do is press cancel right here since we do not want to automatically run it because it won't really work. So what you want to do is run a few commands and basically install the VirtualBox VS Edition themselves and you will be good to go and be able to actually get the full screen Kali Linux. As we can see right now, I'm installing some VirtualBox guest uh, utilities, as I believe that I did that. So let me just see right here. apt get install VirtualBox and then uh, minus guest minus utils. So you just press here Y. If it asks you do you want to continue, you press here Y to for yes and, and for no. And it will download those utilities for you. So let's go forward. Not really sure how long this took. It took quite some time, so a few minutes. It didn't prompt any questions during the installation. And right after you do that, what I did, oops, let me go one step back. So right after I did that, I changed my directory to this directory. So I changed my directory to media. And from there, I want to change my directory to CD-ROM0. Since there, since there is where my uh, VirtualBox uh, uh, guest editions are, which I imported previously with devices and then insert VirtualBox guest editions. So I go there. I will probably type CD. Okay, so here it is. And then we can see a bunch of programs right here. Uh, we, well, the program that we are interested in is the VBox Linux editions.run. All of the other programs, as you can see, these .exe programs are for uh, are for Windows. So you want to copy the VBox Linux editions .run, and what you want to do is basically just run that file. So as we can see, in order to run that file, you need to type sh and then dot slash and then the name of the file itself. Then you can press enter and this will start actually downloading or installing the VirtualBox Yes editions for you. It says do you wish to continue. I just pressed here yes. And it started installing it. So let me just forward this so we don't wait for the installation. Okay, so it is still installing. And here is the error that I, that I actually got right after it. As it says, VBox client failed to register resizing support. Now, this is the error that you might get or you might not get. Basically, uh, as I was saying in this video, but the other didn't really record it, I was saying that the installing of the VirtualBox guest editions is most likely different from for every Kali Linux version and it really uh, often gives some errors back but the best thing you can do is actually just reboot after the error and it might actually even work after that. It probably will work or unless you actually specified something wrongly in the commands and you actually get a real error. This is not something that we should be worried about. So if you get the same thing right here, don't be worried. As you can see right now, all I did was just reboot the machine with the reboot command. So let me just show you. Let me just show you. So I typed reboot. And now my PC, or pardon me, my Kali Linux machine will actually restart. As soon as it boots, you can see that it actually booted up in the full screen mode. And they get prompted the login screen in the full screen mode. So as long as you do all of the commands that I did in this video uh, in the same order, even if you get that error, don't worry, just restart your Kali Linux machine and you will have the full screen mode enabled. As we can see, once I log in, my desktop and everything else is in the full screen mode. So that would be about it for the actual uh, going full screen in Kali Linux video. Uh, I just wanted to show you this. Uh, basically, I, as I said, I didn't really redo the entire process itself since 
uh, I just wanted to show you in case you get the error as well, so you know what you need to do. So that would be about it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope I see you in the next one. Bye.